Uh, our next speaker will be the grandson of the Niftar, Mr. Mark, Shah Mark Shahino Bechavot. Echir kili majdo ali. Marco, Beder a wadik lel bet. Beder a kedak ma biskleti le betak. The last words of my grandfather was, Marco, can I, can I take you home? With my bicycle, can I take you home? And at the time, I, I laughed, I chuckled. And I said, thank you so much, Jiddo. I really appreciate it. I can walk. But if I can go back to that day and re-say what I said, I would have said something totally different. I would have said, Jiddo, enough. Enough for doing for you. You do so, so much for us, each and every single one of us. You constantly care and love about us. You're thinking about us before you think about yourself. You're in a situation where you can't walk so well. How, do, how are you thinking about me in this situation? We want you to stay here at home. We don't want you to leave us. I wish I told him those words. That's the kind of person he was. Even though he was physically incapable of taking me home on his bicycle, he still offered it. He still offered it. I have a personal story that I'd like to say about my grandfather, my Jiddo. Around three years ago, he was having troubles with his kidneys. They were failing. So he went to, he went to the, one, of the best, one of the best hospitals in New York, Cornell Hospital. At the time, I recently quit my job. And I had the zakhut to see my grandfather daily. I remember overhearing the doctors and nurses. They said, the situation doesn't look so good. We're giving him every medication. We're putting him on everything. It's not working. And any, any other person in that situation would be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I can't believe it. Full of negativity. But my jiddo was the total opposite of that. Majido said these few words. Hodula Hashem kitov kilom hasdo en old milvado baruch Hashem. All these words that he would say, he, he knew, he knew that Hashem was taking care of him. It was Hashem and only Hashem. So he was always positive, positive with that smile, the legendary smile. One day I looked at Majido. I looked, I looked at him and I noticed his smile is, wow, unbelievable. His teeth are perfectly straight, so white. So I told him, Jiddo, your teeth are beautiful. I love your teeth. They're so nice. And Hakam Eli did the famous laugh. He went, ha, 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 ha. He took his hand and he put it right in his mouth. He pulled out those dentures. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, these teeth are, these teeth are not real. I lost my teeth a few years ago. And, but to the rest of us sitting in this room, that smile was so authentic. Even though they looked, even though he said they were fake, to us it was so real. Because we felt that love. We felt the connection through his smile. Back to the story. Me at the time, I was jobless. I was constantly worried. I didn't know what I was going to say, what I was going to do. I was so worried. And Jido asked me, Lesh Chayef, you know, why are you scared? Why are you worried? And I told him the situation. And I'll never forget the words that he told me. He obviously told me, He always gave me hizuk in his situation when he should be worried, not me. He should be worried, not me. And it happened to be the opposite. But he told me, 
words that I'll never forget in my life. He told me in Arabic, Tinjah awal marra. What does that mean? It means that you're going to succeed the first time. And me at the time, I'm like, what does that mean? He's being one-worded. He's not really explaining what he's saying. And I tell him, Jiddo, can you explain what you're trying to say? What are you telling me? Same thing. Baruch Hashem. Hodula Hashem Kitov Kilom Hasdo. Don't worry. God's going to take care of you. Look at those planes outside. <laughs> out of nowhere, he would tell me, look at those planes outside. Look at the beautiful ocean that we're looking at. Just to, just to make me happy, to lighten the mood. And a few weeks later, a, name, a man by the name of Musa Saad, which is like another son to my grandfather. My grandfather was speaking to him, and he told him the situation. I didn't have a job, and I'm looking for something. And he said, Anything, I'll do anything for you. Made a few phone calls, and the rest is history. I got that job, and I'm still there till today. I'm so happy. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I'm so happy over there. This is the definition of what's written. The words of a Sadiq is a met, and will be fulfilled by Hashem. Everything that he said was true. He wouldn't say a lie. So he meant every word that he said. And I'm so happy, Baruch Hashem. That's my personal story. Let's go back to the hospital. If you, only think, if you think he only had kidney issues, you'd be mistaken. Think again. Not only did he suffer with kidney issues at the time, he's, he's dealing with something else. The doctors didn't know how to break it to my mom. They told my mother, we're sorry to tell you, but with extensive ex examinations, we detected the mahala, the sickness, inside of Jiddah. Not only did he have to deal with the kidney problem, now this. My mom was ecstatic. She was bawling. She was crying so hard. She didn't know what to say or what to do. And my jiddo was watching this at the time. He looked at her. said, Ya binti, lish am tipki. My mom said, she didn't say anything. She couldn't say anything. She was speechless from how, how worried and scared she was. She lost her mom with the sickness. Hacham Eli told my mom these two words. He, he told her, Ma finishi. Don't worry, ya binti. Ma finishi. There's nothing wrong with me. My mom said, but we have the best doctors here in Cornell. The best doctors. They're doing the best job that they can do on Jiddo. They double checked and triple checked. He has it. You have it, Jiddo. He said, Ma finishi. There's nothing wrong with me. Two weeks later, the doctors examine him again and they see something unbelievable. The cancer that they thought that was in his body exited completely. It wasn't there at all. And the doctors couldn't believe it. They were, they were like, whoa, they were stunned. They said, to, they said to my jiddo, it must be that you're a man of God. You're a holy man. There's no other explanation for it. When you're that great and you're making sure you're taking care of all of Hashem's kids, Hashem says, I'll take care of you. I'm going to get rid of that sickness. You're not going to have it. Every great tzaddik is always accompanied by a great tzaddikit. 
So I would like to mention my tete, tete Olga, Aleha Shalom, Allah Yirhama. She was a modest woman, she was kind, she was loving, she was giving. Anything that you can say amazing about a woman, she had that trait. Unbelievable. I would like to say a story about her to illustrate how great she was. My mother, when she was a young girl, she used to see my grandmother cleaning the chickens in the sink, full of blood, full of feathers, full of all the filth and dirt from the chickens that my grandfather did shaitan. She asked my grandmother, Mama, why are you cleaning all these chickens? It's annoying. It's too much. Why would you accept something like that upon yourself? Why, why don't you stop doing that? My grandmother replied to her. She said, My daughter, you're looking at this all wrong. I'm happy to be in, in, in assistance of Hakam Eli, your father. He gave, he's giving his life up for everybody. I'd, I'd be more than happy to help him. It would be an honor for me to help such a great man. I would be willing to put my life on the line. I would help him with anything and everything that he would need. Because I love him and I know how special he is. And how much Hashem loves him. And what he does for people. After my grandmother passed away, my jiddo continued with the shahita. He continued doing the shahita. And he didn't, he didn't just do shahita and give it to you. He did the complete full job. He took the chicken, he did the shahita, he cleaned it, he brought it to you, super clean. But not only did he clean it and, and, and do the best job on it, Instead of you coming to him, he came to you. He came to each and every single one of you. Who do you see would do that? You should come to him. He came to you. He ran after the mitzvah. He ran away from the kabod. This is my jiddo, Hakam Eli. He hid himself. He made himself like everybody else, wearing that hat, wearing those clothes, saying, I'm just like everyone else, I'm a simple man. But Jiddah, during your lifetime, we were able to see a glimpse of how great you are. Now your secret's out. Everybody's saying your story. Everybody has a personal story in this room. It's true what they say. You don't know what you have until it's gone. Jiddo, I'm so fortunate and blessed to be your oldest grandson. I wish I was able to spend more time with you and told you how much I really love you. Please, pray for us in Shemaim the same way you prayed for us down here on earth. May we all be so khay to follow in the footsteps of Hakameli Khalife. To, do, to, to, to go above and beyond for people. To be misirud nefesh. To love everyone, to care about everyone. To do everything completely Hashem Shemaim. And he would end every single blessing with this. I would like to end the same way. Khani Ratson, Vinomara Amen.